In this video, I'm going to show you a few things to help you get started exploring Real Studio on your own. I'm doing this demonstration on a Mac, but the experience would be exactly the same on Windows or Linux. When you launch Real Studio, you're presented with a new project, which holds all the things that make up the application you wish to create. A project includes windows, menus, but might also include pictures, sounds, and movies as well. Because Windows are such an important part of your application's user interface, I'm going to focus on that. A new project starts with one window open in the Window Editor. On the left is a long list of controls you can use to build your user interface. On the right is the list of the Windows properties. For example, you can use the Properties pane to choose the type of window, change its title, etc. In this demonstration, I'm going to build a simple web browser so I'm going to change the title of the window to Browser. I want the window to automatically open in the middle of the main screen, so I'm going to change the placement to Main Screen. First, the user needs a place to type in the web address. I'll add a text field to the window by double-clicking on it. You can drag it to the window as well. Next, I need a push button the user can click to go to the web address they entered. I'm going to change the caption of the button to Go and make it a default button, and we're going to position it in the upper right corner. The text field is not long enough, so I'm going to resize it. I need a control to display the web page itself, so I'll add an HTML viewer to the page and resize it. Now, even though I haven't written any code, I can still try out my application at any time by clicking the Run button in the toolbar. Two things I just noticed. First, it would be nice if the text field had HTTP colon slash slash filled by default. Second, the controls don't move or resize when I resize the window. Let's go back and make those two changes. I'll select the text field and change its text property to HTTP colon Slash, slash. I want the push button to stay in the upper right corner of the window, so I'm going to lock it to the top and right. I want the text field to stay in the upper left corner, so I'm going to lock it to the left and top. But I also want its right side to stretch with the window, so I'm going to lock it to the right as well. Finally, I want the HTML viewer to resize in all directions, so I'm going to lock it on all sides. Now I can resize the window right here in the editor and see that it behaves the way I want. The last step is to make it display the web page the user enters. I'm going to do this by telling the push button that when it's clicked, it should tell the HTML viewer to load the web page the user entered. Since the code is going to start when the user clicks on the push button, I'm going to add the code to it. To do that, I'll double click it. Now we are looking at the code for the window. And you can see the push button, HTML viewer, and text field controls I added to the window. Since I double clicked on the push button, it's expanded to show its events. Events are things that happen to the control, like the user clicking, typing, dragging, etc. The action event of the push button is already selected, and it's the event that occurs when the user clicks on the button. Now I can enter the action event code I want in the edit pane. When the user clicks the push button, I want the HTML viewer to load the URL from the text field field. In object-oriented programming, you often start off with the name of the object. So I'll type HTML 